What is up fellow Cybertronians? Welcome back to the EN02 channel. My name is Ian and today we are going to be looking at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Bludgeon. So yeah, this is Bludgeon out of the box and he is basically a retool and recolor of the Transformers Legacy Tarn. So he's got this brighter orange and maroon and green color scheme as compared to the purple of tar he has the same scalp the only thing that's different with this figure is the sword the color and the head scalp right so he's got a new skull like samurai face scalp and a nice sword to go along with it other than that everything else is the same now i'm not a particular fan of this scalp i always found this figure this scalp to be too skinny as a Voyager class. I expect it to be a lot bigger, but instead this guy is very, very simple, very, very flat. Well, that was at least for Tarn anyway. In this case, for Bludgeon, I like that I can leave the Tarn on his back to give him a, like additional bulk to the figure because he has a samurai sword to hold and play around with instead. I can't do that for Tarn because if I do that, then he has no weapons. All right, so yeah, the sword really does improve this scalp a lot. Other than that, it's the same figure. I do like the brighter colors. So yeah, all around, I do like this bludgeon figure. So what I usually like to do is, I would keep these smaller towers pointing downwards, just so his back looks a bit cleaner. And also to give it a little bit more bulk at the back. All right, so he doesn't look so flat. But other than that, yeah, that's about it for this guy. Uh, what I do like about this guy and this mold basically is it is very articulated. You can get some really good poses out of this guy. He has all the knee jo leg joints that you can get, all the arm joints you can get, uh, rotation at the wrist and all that. Uh, there's only one issue where he can't, at a certain position, he can't uh, articulate his arms outwards. So if you want him to stretch his arm outwards, you've got to lift him up like this and rotate the arm. So there is some hindrance there, but doesn't bother me much. I can still get him into poses that I really like. So yeah, that is all good. Based on my experience, the downside of this mold usually comes with the transformation and the vehicle mode. So let's get to it. Okay, so to start the transformation, first thing you want to do is Remove all his weapons to make it a lot easier on you. We can start off by lifting up this back plate, making some uh, clearance. We can rotate it around, but we can leave that for later if you want. Either way is fine. Then lift up the chest, but not all the way. Next is pull out this all the tracks, basically his shoulders and all that, and rotate them backwards. But again. Not all the way, you're going to stop at this point. Do the same for the other hand. Now the next part you want to do is, okay, so here comes a big problem with this figure, which I would like to complain about. The only sculpting difference that they did for this figure as compared to the original Tarn mode is the head sculpt. And they couldn't even do that properly because the clearance for this head to go into the body is just not there you're going to have to force it in you're going to bend some plastic to get it in there and that is uh, really something disappointing because that was the only thing you had to do and you couldn't do it right but anyway force the head in so that we can flip up the chest piece to its maximum rotate the tracks all the way to the back okay so once you have all the tracks aligned what you want to do is push down this back panel to basically hide his head. So that's the back done. The next thing you want to do is tap his feet together, bend his knees outwards. Make sure you bend the joint that is inside the leg, not the knee, not just the ones at the knees because we're going to have to fold them all the way to the back and tap them in to the back plate over here like this. Right, so the leg, the leg is basically got the bend all the way around. Okay, once that is done, the next thing you want to do is fold down the arms, fold down the arms, 
they have these tabs over here and they go into these pegs at the side of his leg so what you want to do is rotate them and then basically bend the arm uh, inwards until you can peg that joint in do that the same for the other arm make sure the arm articulates this way so that we can tap the arms into the side of his legs next thing you want to do is fold this green panels to the back so these green panels which will have to go underneath the leg so yeah just move things around get that pegged in and secure the last step is to flip out the panels beside these tracks flip them in close it up flip out these panels to the side of the tracks flip the tracks in close it up and you basically have the tank mode all done all you have to do is peg on the weapons there are two pegs on the turrets over here you can peg them into these two on top of his shins and the sword can go to either side of the tank is fine and there you go this is Rajan in his tank mode now I don't really care for this tank mode it's not really great in my opinion no wheels to roll around only turrets to play with over here but I suppose you know that's what tanks do so it is what it is it's just not really something that gets my attention it doesn't resemble any uh, real life tanks it's a Cybertronian tank and yet they couldn't make something that looks a lot more interesting we can basically see the robot folded in on itself and that's about it yeah so this is the tank mode uh, not too great so yeah let's get this guy back into robot mode and we can talk about the figure from an overall perspective okay so here we have bludgeon back in his robot mode so overall i like this figure i like it a lot the articulation on this figure is always fun to have the sword really made a big difference to the mold now that I can leave the turrets on the back it gives him a lot of that extra bulk that he needs because this figure is a rather tiny one despite being a Voyager size uh, I feel like that is the trend Hasbro is going for they're eventually going to shrink all the figures until they cost like nothing to produce because I mean if we look at what I perceive to be the best Voyager out this year which is the SS102 Prime and the size difference is just astounding right? uh, the Prime is a head taller they both have a slender figure but Prime feels a lot more filled out whereas this guy is you know, very light, very simple Prime also comes with a sword so yeah and he is also very well articulated so you can get him to almost about the same level of poses as this guy so yeah this mold i feel it's not a great one but it is better this way as compared to how it is on time so that's a plus i guess now the thing that really grinds my gears about this release is that all they did for this figure is to remold the head to give him that samurai skull look but they still couldn't do it right because during the transformation you're gonna have to force it into uh, the back just to get it to transform so I think getting the correct size and clearance for your transformation is the least you can do right considering you are repurposing a mold and just giving him a different color scheme so yeah overall not great but good enough I guess so if I were to rate this figure I would give him about a 7.5 in my opinion it is a fun one to have it's a lot better than Tarn in my opinion just because I can leave the turrets on the back to give to hide that flat design that he has I mean just look at it without the turret it's a skinny boy but with the turret yeah he does get some bulk to him and that's all because he has a sword to play with instead 
of just the turret as a gun. But anyway, yeah, 7.5 out of 10. That's my rating for this figure. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe and all that. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Goodbye!